Hello. Hello. Yeah, uh, your voice is coming now. Hello. Hello. Fine. Uh, I will. Uh, yeah. Is it better? Yeah, it's better. It's uh, it's fine now. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Uh, I was uh, discussing about what a software uh, copyright is, and uh, I was giving the definition for the moment. Uh, now, software copyright is a type of copyright for software. Uh, which is uh, essentially a computer program. So what we get protection for in a software is uh, the set of instructions, uh, which not only include uh, the source code itself, but also uh, the database schemas. It could also include all the codes, all the structures, all 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 uh, allied and objective uh, object codes or source codes, which would typically form a part of a computer program. Uh, the software, uh, the copyright for a software not only protects uh, the source code, as I said, it can even protect the screen display. So even a snapshot or a screenshot of a screen of a computer would also be, uh, if it is in terms of what is being displayed, uh, would also constitute a part of a software copyright. Object codes in a by part of uh, the copy can also print the entire source code on a piece of paper and then put it across along uh, with the legal forms uh, to the copyright office. Or we can uh, put the entire source code on a compact disk or a DVD and also submit it either in the form of an object code or a source code on a CD and put it across to the copyright office again. Uh, this is an important case uh, in the U.S. because, as I said, uh, case law or any any litigation on copyright infringement that happen in the U.S. Uh, would, they would also be applicable to the Indian jurisdiction, and any any decision taken there can also be uh, abided by or put across to the Indian courts. Now, this was uh, a very important decision that came across uh, from a U.S. federal circuit court wherein it was held that a computer program's structure and not only its literal code is also protected by the copyright. So it's not only the data structure, uh, it's not only the, the exact set of codes or the for and the while loops, but how the structure of the entire software is focused or how it is drafted would also be something that would be uh, protectable as a copyrightable subject matter. Similarities in structure, sequence, and organization of a program is sufficient to support an infringement claim. So even though the literal code might not be matching of an infringer and of a software developer person who has a copyrighted work, even though the literal codes do not match, you can always uh, uh, claim for an infringement suit even if the sequence, the structure, or the organization of the program is similar to the copyrighted work. If there is a similarly, if there is a substantive uh, similarity between the file structures or the screen outputs and even subroutines, uh, they can also be used as far as uh, the claims for infringement are concerned. Uh, furthermore, uh, selection and arrangement of non-protectable elements may be protected, even if the constituent elements may not. So even if sections or parts of a code are already known in another jurisdiction or, or for example if there is another source code which is already present and we pick, up, we pick up certain sections of that source code from across five or different source codes and compile all those in a very unique uh, uh, arrangement then we can also claim for a copyright as far as the registration uh, of, of the same is concerned as well. This was another uh, uh, litigation uh, that happened in the U.S. Uh, wherein, in uh, order to uh, determine infringement, the court uh, had to engage in an abstract filtration and comparison test. Now, what this test essentially means is that in an abstraction test, the literal code is not looked upon as is. So the code is broken down into different abstracts, so different data structures, or subroutines, or functions that were incorporated as far as the implementation of the coding was concerned 
and those abstractions are then filtered based on whether those sections or subroutines or data structures are already there in the industry, are already part of mechanical specs or the hardware constraints or the functionality and when all these are different segregated elements, whatever is part or constitutes the original work and which is not there as part of the public domain would then be compared with what is claimed to be the infringing work. So it is called as the abstraction filtration and comparison test. So this is the test which is used in all litigations to understand and assess whether there is an infringement of a copyright which is happening or not. So it is extremely important when we file for a copyright application at the Delhi Copyright Office which is the only office in India for copyright work. It is extremely important for us to ensure that we know which component of the entire source code is our own original work, which component has been taken from which source and if it has been taken from a licensed source or from an open source software code or, or, or what is the originality of that particular code. So it's extremely important to point out either through in the application itself or in our own minds we should have a complete clarity on what is the original work that we are trying to protect. What are the rights that are uh, awarded uh, to a software copyright owner? Now the rights are uh, explained and protected under section 14A and 14B, wherein in the 14A is relatively a restricted right, wherein the right of a copyright owner is to sell or give on commercial rental or offer for sale for commercial rental a copy of the software program. Section 14B covers the protection or the rights in a much larger manner, wherein it says that the copyright is protectable for everything, uh, including the reproduction, issuing of copies, making any film, any adaptation, any translation, any modification. So if somebody picks up a software source code which is made in a platform C++ and translates that exact same logic and sequence of implementation in .NET, he would definitely be translating that entire work into another platform and would definitely constitute infringement of the same copyrighted work. At the same time, if somebody in a different context of, for example, a movie, somebody writes down the lyrics for a movie uh, or, or, or song and if actually somebody copies that and sings that song without the permission of the copyright owner, he would constitute to be infringing on the copyright of the original person. What are the legal requirements for filing? There are two requirements when you file for a copyright application. Then the first requirement for a copyright has to be that the work that we intend copywriting has to be original. We have to be able to prove. Uh, sorry for interrupting. Existing work. Uh, again, your voice is breaking. Okay. I mean, I can just try once again because I'm not even moving from my seat. Is it better? Um. Hello. Hello. Yeah. I mean, I can change the volumes and then reset it again. Is yeah, it, it better seems, now? It seems better now. Yeah. All right. I'll I'll then uh, fix this. All right. So I was uh, talking about uh, the requisites for uh, filing of a copyright application, wherein the first requisite is that it has to be original as far as the work is concerned. We have to be able to prove that the source code that we have, that we intend copywriting, is not a part of an existing source code, either in the form of which is either in the form of a licensed copy or source code that we have picked up from the internet, from any specific source uh, or, 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 or a website, or it is not part of an open source software as well. Our requirements are not very strict and complex. Once that we have proved that it is the work that
original in all senses or the source code and then submit it at the copyright office for submission. We have to submit three copies of the work, so even if we are submitting uh, the entire copyright source code in uh, a software CD, we have to submit three copies of it. A lot of companies use the same source code and keep on improving on it, especially the product companies over and over again, over across years. In that particular case, for every year when we file for a new copyright application, we need not always originally have uh, to include the copyright subject matter that we have protected in the last year. So if, if it's not uh, an essential component, so if you can extract out the original part of the source code that you have drafted for 2011 and that you intend getting copyrighted, from what was protected in 2010, then only the substance or, or only the subject matter that we have for 2011 can be put across to the copyright office and uh, we can submit it at the copyright office in that particular sense. Alternatively, we can also submit, if desired, the 2010 and the 2011 source codes together at the copyright office once again. The fees for filing a copyright application is 50 rupees. Uh, we have to file certain legal forms, one of which is the primary of which is uh, Form 4. Uh, we have to take a no uh, uh, objection certificate, which is the NOC from the, uh, the creators. So in case uh, the, the applicant for the copyright work is a company and there are multiple people who work with that company, then in that particular case, uh, the employees of that company who are part or who are responsible for building up that entire source code, we have to take prior permission from the employees uh, along with uh, and to a non, no objection certificate and then file the copyright application uh, in the name of the applicant. It is also important to understand that if you already have an employee employer agreement in place, in which the agreement very clearly Hello? states uh, that uh, Tarun, all, yeah? uh, your voice is absolutely yeah. not clear. People are uh, not able to hear you properly. Can you please check the microphone setting, etc.? I'm trying my best, you know. I'm, uh, this is the maximum that I have. I, in fact, have the best of the internet also. Hello? Hello? Yeah. Is it a little better? Uh, it, it's better now, but uh, when you start speaking, then uh, the voice breaks a lot. Okay. Uh, should I continue once? Should we try once again then in that case? Hello? Yeah, please go ahead. Thank you. All right. We have the no objection certificate called as the form four. Uh, form four uh, is is what we have to fill along with the applicant details, uh, giving details of when the work was created, whether the work is published or, or it is unpublished. What is the title of the work? What is the language we have to uh, for software right, uh, software copyrights? The language uh, would obviously be English, uh, and, and uh, the class and description of the work would be literary. A software work comes uh, uh, under literary uh, classes of work. Is the work uh, to be registered an original work? And so there, there, it is, a, it is this statement is called as the statement of further. Uh, particulars in which we have to give all these uh, further details and these three forms statement of further particulars statement of particulars and the form 4 all these three forms have to be filled up together for filing at the copyright office along with the work that we intend getting protected that which can as I said either be a printout of the entire source code or can be written down in an object form or a binary form or uh, the source code form on a seed, the end can be submitted. This is how a registered 
certificate, a copyright certificate looks like. Uh, it is, um, this is the class in Yeah. Mm -hmm.